Having made his comic book debut in 1948's Detectives Comic No. 140, the Riddler has gone on to become one of Batman's most beloved and infamous rogues. Now, to those without a discerning eye, a villain that basically uses riddles to tie all of his crimes together might seem like a pretty duff gimmick, but trust me, he's done some pretty nasty stuff in the past. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the eight worst things the Riddler has ever done. Number eight, drugging Barbara Gordon. DC Comics' Elseworld stories always allow for things to be shaken up a little, and the alt-world thrill killer tales saw the Riddler become a, well, total creep, even bigger than he usually is. Thrill Kill takes place in the 1960s, in a Gotham city where Batman doesn't exist. While the caped crusader is absent from this world, Gotham still does have a Batgirl and a Robin, and it's with Barbara Gordon that Edward Nygma's eerie side really starts to show itself. In this what-if story, Nygma is a psychiatrist and award-winning author rather than out-and-out -out suited and booted supervillain. That doesn't mean that he's not a nasty piece of work, however. So much so, Edward takes advantage of Barbara upon her deciding to pay him a visit in a patient capacity. Purposefully giving her a ridiculously strong Valium and other medication, Nygma turns Batgirl into a near-comatose zombie who hangs around people she'd never really associate with. And it's not even Barbara who manages to put a stop to all of this, for Riddler's sinister game is only halted once Jim Gordon and Alfred step up and strong-arm the villain. Number 7. He Forced Batman to Electrocute Himself With the year-long zero-year tale, the writers did their best to tell Batman's origin in a way that felt fresh yet respectful to what fans had come to know and love about the caped crusader. Consisting of three key acts, Zero Year saw Bruce Wayne returning to Gotham City after an absence that was so long that he officially was declared dead. As Bruce begins to take his steps to becoming the Dark Knight, the final arc of this all-encompassing storyline was titled Savage City, and saw the rookie Batman come toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Riddler. And not the chuckle-heavy, cringe-inducing Riddler, but one who is utterly vicious and sinister. Here in Savage City, Edward Nygma concocts a scheme that means Batman has to allow himself to be electrocuted in order to save Gotham City. With the flooded Gotham's power out and the military prepared to level the city with an airstrike, the final strand of the Riddler's master plan finds Bat with no other choice but to attach himself to an electrode in the hope that his heart and pulse can re-energize Gotham's power and stop the city from being wiped out. Thankfully, Bruce's ticket is just up to the task, yet it was pretty touch and go there for a minute. Number 6. Blowing Up Cat woman. When looking at the greater landscape of sh house things the Riddler has done, you can't help but turn your attention to the Arkham video game series. For the most part, the first few games saw Nygma off the grid and serving as a background player who was merely there to provoke Batman from afar. By the time the most recent outing in the franchise, Arkham Knight, rolled around, however, Eddie was well and truly front and center in a maniacal and chilling way. By this point in the series, it's been established that Selina Kyle, aka Catwoman, is one of the scarcely few people who Bruce Wayne actually cares about. So when Riddler looks to kill off Selina, this is a gut punch to the Dark Knight. For those not familiar with Arkham Knight, there's a moment where the Riddler attaches an explosive collar to the neck of Catwoman. To save her, the player has to collect a bunch of keys by completing a stupid amount of tasks. It's tedious, it's unrelenting, and it can be a truly frustrating experience for gamers. Either way, it's Nygma at his twisted best, and if you and your controller aren't up to the task, that means that you get to see, well, technically off-screen, Selina Kyle go boom. Number 5. Covering up the death of his crush It would be remiss not to include Fox's Gotham show when looking at some of the more sinister and shocking acts carried out by Edward Nygma. Throughout Gotham's five-season run, we saw Corey Michael Smith's Eddie go from slightly erratic and a quirky sort, who works alongside the GCPD, to an unhinged murderous supervillain. And one of the absolute worst things the series' take on the Riddler ever did centered around his one true love, Kristen Kringle. After Nygma develops a crush on his colleague Kringle in the show's debut season, he ends up seeing firsthand that the apple of his eye has an abusive boyfriend. Confronting this boyfriend, Edward ends up killing him, kind of accidentally, but maybe a little bit not so accidentally. Deciding to eventually come clean to Kristen about what he's done, largely in the hopes of winning her affection, Nygma ends up choking her to death. Supposedly, Eddie had just meant to keep Kringle silent so that he could fully explain what he'd done, but he applied a tad too much force and the love of his life ends up dead in his arms. While this itself was pretty bad, making things worse was the fact that Edward Nygma did his best to cover up all of this, as audiences saw a second personality emerging in Edward. That personality, of course, would see Nygma utterly become the Riddler. Number 4. He Tormented Batman With Jason Todd's Death 
Using the death of a loved one to torment someone is a low, low blow. For Edward Nigma, though, it was just another day at the office. During the Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee fan favorite Hush arc, Batman finds himself beaten down physically and emotionally at every corner by a mysterious new villain named Hush. As the story heads towards its shocking climax, it's revealed that Hush is actually Jason Todd, the Robin who was brutally murdered by the Joker 15 years ago. In reality, this Jason was actually Clayface. Thanks to the Riddler's orders, Clayface took on the appearance of how Jason Todd may have looked had he lived to become an adult. One of the big reveals of Hush was that the Riddler actually knew that Batman was Bruce Wayne. As such, he used this knowledge to target Bruce by attacking him with his greatest failure, not being able to prevent Jason's death in a move that was scummy even by his low standards. There's an added element of pure evil to the whole Hush story, as the Riddler also has a role to play in turning Bruce's childhood pal Tommy Elliot into the titular Hush villain. Number 3 becoming Hush. Going one step further than setting Tommy Elliot on his path to becoming Hush, the recent animated adaptation of that story saw the Riddler actually become Hush. In a twist of the source material, the decision was made to switch things up and have Edward Nigma be the man behind the mysterious Hush moniker. This move may have soured some long-time fans of DC Comics, yet it was undeniably a call that comic book fans, much like Batman, did not see coming. This change to the original 12-part Hush story meant that Nigma was the one who'd put together together the personal attack on Bruce Wayne which saw Bruce, his allies and his enemies all used as chess pieces in an elaborate plan to break Batman. By making this change, the animated Batman Hush movie made the Riddler into a sicker and more twisted rogue than he'd been in any other animated or live action offering to date. Still, as mentioned, this tweaking of the original source material was one that didn't sit well with everybody, as highlighted by the online backlash the film received upon its release. Number 2. Going Legit for fans of the Riddler and fans of the larger scope of Batman and his world of supporting players, it just felt completely flat to see Edward Nigma go legit at one point in time. Not just a fleeting one-off or merely a month or two, because here the Riddler was a good guy for the best part of four years. In the aftermath of the Hush arc, there came a chain of events that saw Nigma's outlook change. After butting heads with Hush, the Joker, and Poison Ivy, undergoing plastic surgery and extreme tattooing, and even being left in a year-long coma at the hands of the Shining Knight, Eddie reformed and essentially became became a hero in his own right from 2006 up to 2010. The idea here was to add an extra layer of depth to Edward Nigma's character and to try something different with one of DC Comics' most infamous villains. Yet this was actually one of the worst things the Riddler has ever done for readers, who largely just wanted to see Nigma being a devious, deceptive rogue who tormented Gotham City rather than him being one of the city's saviors. And number one, he left his daughter for dead. It takes a special kind of sicko to turn on his family, but that's one of the many twisted things that the Riddler has definitely done. After his daughter Enigma becomes part of the villainous Titans East group in an attempt to get her father's attention, the Riddler brings things to a brutal and bloody head. Even though he's happy to let Enigma be part of his inner circle, even teaming up with her to fight Batman, there's a sinister underbelly to all of this when Eddie turns on his offspring. In Batman number 712, following a battle with the Caped Crusader, the Riddler flips his lid and attacks his daughter. Water, but not before firing off one of his trademark riddles, of course. What's purple and green and bleeds profusely, he asks. And with that, readers were left with the memory of Enigma's screams as her fate was left unknown. The general consensus is that Enigma was either killed or left for dead by her daddy dearest. Whatever her fate, this was yet another example of how twisted the Riddler can be. And there we go, my friends. Those were the eight worst things the Riddler has ever done. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.